The most powerful NASA rocket ever built, the Space Launch System, soared into the sky on November 16 to begin the long-delayed Artemis 1 mission to send the Orion capsule to the moon and back. Propelled by a pair of solid rocket boosters and four RS-25 engines, the rocket reached the period of maximum aerodynamic pressure 1 minute and 10 seconds after liftoff. At approximately 2 minutes and 12 seconds after launch, the twin solid rocket boosters separated from the core stage, while at 48 kilometers altitude. The rocket's upper stage, called the interim cryogenic propulsion stage, separated from the core stage 8 minutes and 16 seconds after liftoff. The stack then entered a coast phase, during which Orion's four solar arrays were deployed. The deployment of the arrays took approximately 12 minutes to complete. About an hour and 40 minutes after liftoff, the upper stage ignited for a lengthy 18-minute translunar injection burn, sending Orion on a trajectory that will intercept the Moon on November 21. The upper stage separated from the spacecraft about two hours after liftoff and deployed 10 CubeSats designed for various destinations, including the Moon, asteroids and interplanetary space. The upper stage later conducted one final burn to safely dispose of itself into a heliocentric orbit. Orion sent a selfie video to Earth more than nine hours into the Artemis 1 mission, showing the Earth's half-lit disk in the backdrop. At the time, the capsule was more than 92,000 kilometers from Earth, about one-fourth of the distance to the Moon. In addition to the selfie image, NASA also shared a shot from inside the capsule, showing passenger commander Munikin Campos, a suited mannequin, who is testing the orange suit astronauts will wear aboard the vehicle on its next flight. At around 3 p.m. UTC on November 16, Orion performed a 30-second long outbound trajectory correction maneuver by firing engines placed in the back of its European service module. The capsule then entered six days of cruising toward the Moon and will enter a distant retrograde lunar orbit on November 25. The probe will remain in that orbit for about 10 days to collect data and allow mission controllers to assess its performance. Orion will leave lunar orbit as early as December 1 and re-enter Earth's atmosphere on December 11, eventually splashing down in the Pacific Ocean within the vicinity of a recovery ship. I have uploaded a dedicated video discussing the Artemis 1 mission objectives, the scientific payloads it carried, and the engineering aspects of the SLS rocket and Orion capsule in detail. Please check out that video by following the link in the description. If Artemis 1 goes as expected, Artemis 2, SLS and Orion's first launch with astronauts aboard will lift off from Kennedy Space Center as early as 2024. The 25 kg capstone probe slipped into orbit around the Moon on November 14, becoming the first CubeSat to visit Earth's nearest neighbor. Capstone, short for CIS Lunar Autonomous Positioning System Technology Operations and Navigation Experiment, was launched on a Rocket Lab Electron rocket on June 28 and was deployed onto a low-energy ballistic lunar trajectory on July 4. That trajectory took the spacecraft far beyond the Moon before swinging back to allow it to enter lunar orbit with a small trajectory correction maneuver. Capstone's journey to the Moon was not easy. The CubeSat briefly lost contact with Earth in July, and the spacecraft experienced a serious valve problem in September that sent it spinning out of control. The Capstone team fixed the issues in time and was finally able to orient and put the spacecraft on the right path. Capstone is now in a near rectilinear halo orbit, which is the same orbit that will be used by Gateway, the moon orbiting space station that will support NASA's Artemis missions. Because of the balancing gravitational pulls of the moon and Earth, mission engineers expect the near rectilinear halo orbit to be highly stable, and a spacecraft should not need to burn much fuel to stay there. Capstone will test and validate the calculated orbital stability of this orbit during a mission designed to last at least six months. The spacecraft will fly within 1,600 kilometers of the Moon's North Pole on its near pass and 70,000 kilometers of the South Pole at its farthest, and it will repeat the cycle every six and a half days. Capstone will also test an advanced space navigation system, which will measure its absolute position in cis lunar space by interacting with NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. This peer-to-peer -peer navigation technique will allow future spacecraft to determine their location without relying on tracking data from Earth-based ground antennas. Chinese Tianzhou 5 cargo mission arrived at the newly completed Tiangong Space Station on November 12, setting a new record for the shortest rendezvous and docking time. Tianzhou 5 was launched into orbit on November 12 from the Wenchang Satellite Launch Center, atop a long March 7 rocket. The 53-meter-tall three-stage long March 7 rocket uses RP-1 as fuel and liquid oxygen as oxidizer. The rocket's first stage, with its central core and four side boosters, produces a thrust of 7,200 kilonewtons at liftoff, which is very close to the liftoff thrust of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket. 
The 13,500 kg Tianzhou cargo spacecraft carried roughly 6,900 kg of food and supplies for taikonauts aboard the space station. It also carried propellant for the space station, five CubeSats, and five other experiments as part of its mission. The 10.6 meters freighter automatically docked with the Jiangong space station just over two hours after liftoff, setting a world record for the fastest rendezvous and docking between a spacecraft and a space station. It shattered the previous record of three hours and three minutes, set by the Russian Soyuz MS-17 spacecraft in October 2020. Tianjo 5 will remain attached to the space station until May 2023 and be loaded with trash and other unnecessary equipment before being sent back to Earth to be destroyed upon re-entry into the atmosphere. China's Shenzhou-14 Taikonauts aboard the Jiangong Space Station completed their third round of extravehicular activities on Thursday, November 17. During the six-hour extravehicular activity, Taikonauts Chen Dong and Kai Shuz installed a connection bridge between the three space station modules to facilitate future spacewalks and better stabilize the station's T-shaped structure. The spacewalk also marked the first time the Taikonauts used a combination of large and small robotic arms to support activities outside the station. Now, let's discuss some of the major Starship updates from the past week. SpaceX resumed its Super Heavy Booster 7 static fire test campaign ahead of the long-awaited 33-engine static fire test. SpaceX conducted its most ambitious and powerful test to date, the 14-engine static fire test of Booster 7, on November 14. The test began by filling the propellant tanks of the booster with sub-cooled liquid methane and liquid oxygen. While frost was clearly visible outside the oxygen tank section, there was no sign of frost outside the methane tank section, signaling that only a minimal amount of methane was pumped into the tank. Before firing the 14 Raptor V2 engines of the booster, SpaceX conducted a 20-second long orbital launch mount fire extinguisher and detonation suppression system test. The system is designed to purge the launch mount with high-pressure nitrogen gas and water, effectively cleaning and preventing any volatile mixtures of methane and oxygen underneath the pad before engine ignition. At the end of the fire extinguisher and detonation suppression system test, the booster fired 14 of its 33 Raptor engines, briefly becoming the most powerful active rocket in the world. The static fire test that lasted for about 10 seconds produced nearly 32 meganewtons of thrust. The record of the most powerful active rocket in the world was broken by the Space Launch System rocket two days later, producing nearly 40 meganewtons of thrust during liftoff on the Artemis 1 mission. Monday's Booster 7 test doubled the previous highest number of Raptor engines that SpaceX has simultaneously ignited, which happened during a static fire test on September 19. Reacting to a video of the test, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk tweeted, Test went well, with a follow-up tweet the tread, full test duration of 14 engines. In a subsequent tweet, Musk added that the next booster test would be a 20-second long Raptor firing, with maximum oxygen fill to test the autogenous pressurization system. Autogenous pressurization involves heating a small amount of propellant inside the preburner until it turns into a gas, and then sending it back into the propellant tank to keep the liquid propellant inside it at the required pressure necessary to feed a rocket's engines. According to Musk, the autogenous pressurization system test will be followed by one more static fire test, after which SpaceX can hopefully move on to the orbital launch attempt. The final static fire test could be a 33-engine static fire. Monday's milestone test puts the Booster 7 one step closer to being ready for Starship's first orbital flight, currently targeting no earlier than December 2022. Due to unfavorable weather conditions at Starbase, Booster 7 tests that were supposed to take place on Thursday and Friday were canceled by SpaceX, and as per the road closure notice, testing will resume on Monday, November 21. The orbital launch mount sustained some minor damages during Monday's 14-engine test. Even though protected on both sides with shielding, the plumbing that goes over the launch mount legs was roasted during the test. You can see the plumbing's condition before and after the test from these shots captured by the Starship Gazer. SpaceX is currently in the process of fixing the launch mount and installing a shield that will fully cover the plumbing to protect it during future tests. The 14-engine test also witnessed the concrete beneath the orbital launch mount blasting off and raining down due to the intense heat and pressure from the engine exhaust. The concrete needs more reinforcements to avoid damage during future tests and launches. Starship 24, that was destacked from Booster 7 on November 8, is currently resting on suborbital launch pad B, which was modified a few months ago for static fire tests. A Raptor C level engine was removed from the ship and transported back to the build site on November 11. The vehicle's previous static fire test caused the engine to sustain damage, resulting in a dent in the engine bell.
The dent was hidden from the public's view until RGV aerial photography shared this image captured during the recent full stack event. The dent may have been caused by the debris ejected from under the pad during the six-engine static fire test that took place on September 8. A new engine must be installed before stacking ship 24 on booster 7 for a full stack wet dress rehearsal. Moreover, the ship will need to be static fired with its new engine to validate the data and approve the engine and vehicle for flight. A significant amount of scaffolding is currently being installed around pad B, most likely to create a large flame protection and diverter system around the stand. The flame diverter will ensure that a static fire test will not break out a fire near the pad, like the one that occurred during the September 8 test. On November 13, teams installed a panel with plumbing and related components on the Starship Quick Disconnect arm. I think this is a pump system to speed up the process of pumping high-pressure cryogenic fluids into the ship. Starship 25, which was rolled back to the build site on November 8 after a series of cryoproof tests, is currently standing inside the high bay. On Monday morning, teams moved three sea-level Raptor engines into the high bay for installation on Ship 25. Three vacuum-optimized Raptors were also moved into the high bay the same day evening. Once those engines are fully installed, Ship 25 will be rolled out to the launch site to begin cryoproof testing. NASA announced on November 15 that the agency had awarded SpaceX a $1.15 billion contract to develop an upgraded version of its Starship Lunar Lander and fly a second crewed mission. The award, also known as Option B, modifies an earlier human landing system contract between the two parties, which established the agreement for the first lunar demonstration landing as part of the Artemis III mission. The newly announced contract is for the Artemis IV mission, which is currently scheduled for launch in 2027. This new work aims to develop and demonstrate a Starship lunar lander that can carry four crew members, dock with the Lunar Gateway Space Station, and transfer greater mass to the lunar surface to meet NASA's sustaining requirements for missions beyond Artemis III. With this, we have covered all the major updates from last week. Please share your thoughts on the latest science news and Starship updates in the comments section. Also, do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more weekly updates. And as always, thanks for watching.